chapter number 3. Uh, First, Second Timothy were the last books that God gave the Apostle Paul before they cut his head off. That happens to Christians today, and it still is happening today. I happen to hear people say, well, he should have known better. should have kept his mouth shut. When preachers get drunk, that's what people say. But he, he, he was doing exactly what God told him to do. They put him in jail and beheaded him. Now, I've told y'all for years and years and years, the world ain't our friend. If you stand for the Lord and do right, you're going one way and the world's going the other way. It is impossible to walk one hand with Jesus Christ and the other hand with this world system at the same time. They're opposite. Now, here in 1 Timothy, I'm going to take slow for a few minutes this morning, lay the foundation for what I'd like to say. 1 Timothy chapter number 3, um, you'll look at Paul's word to Timothy in verse 13. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, so, my bad. 2 Timothy 3, and look at verse number 13. 2 Timothy is the last book Paul wrote. 2 Timothy 3, and verse number 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Everywhere I go, people say, boy, the world's getting worse and worse. That's what he said. He didn't say it was going to get better and better. That's what the evolutionists teach. And anybody who owns a car or a house or has a body knows that it's a lie. Everything goes downhill unless an outside force intervenes. Uh, that's called, there's, there's entropy, entropy in a closed system. That means everything left by itself falls apart. Your house rots. Your car rusts. Your body, well, look at it. I, I, I said, Billy, a while ago, it's downhill from here on, y'all. It, it's downhill from here on. And I don't care how much you exercise. Uh, that's evolution being proved wrong. And look here at the rest of this verse here. Uh, being Deceiving and being deceived. While they're deceiving you, the news media, the politicians, the world leaders, while they're deceiving you, the devil's deceiving them. See, you can't trust a crook. And whoever's in business with a crook is a crook. And the crooks are crooking the crooks. Look what he said in verse 14. Here's what we're supposed to do. You want to know what you're supposed to do in 2023? Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Amen? Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Listen, brother. We're not looking for a new plan. We're not looking for a new direction. We're not looking for something to believe in. By the grace of God, we'll keep doing the same thing we've always done, preaching the same book, living by the same philosophy, believing in the same God, trusting the same blood, and trusting the Lord Jesus Christ to see us through this mess. And we are in a mess. A mess. Look here, I'll read one more verse. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus. One more. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. I want to preach this morning for just a few minutes. On the subject, facing the final days. Facing these final days that you and I live in. Now, without the Lord, people are having a hard time facing what's going on. I just heard this week there were two college students, healthy, bright, young college age students, not too far down the road down here at a big college, committed suicide. Just this week. Everything in the world to live for, you would think. But they thought, it's not worth living. Suicide is at an all-time high. I mean, think about it. If you are young, uh, you, they, get their, they get ahead of their self. 
as, as many young people do. They start messing around with some boy, some girl, then they fall in love. And all you girls need to understand when you give yourself to a boy or you give yourself to a girl, you you look you give them a part of you you don't ever get back. It ain't just a date, like people try to make it in Hollywood. You'll mess around, your feelings gets involved. Next thing you know, you're head over heels in love. And then it don't work out. It never works out because it's a mess to start with. Then you get your heart broke. And then you're, you're fighting at home. And then you, you uh, maybe you lose hope. And you thought, just kill yourself. They, they ain't nothing to live for. And kids are taught. Kids are taught today that they are animals. I'm not exaggerating. Every public school in America, every public college in America teaches and believes we are is evolved animals. Well, I mean, we got on video. They, they, it, they don't like to admit that, but that's what they believe we are. They believe we are an accident and a product of evolution. And evolution is, is good to some and bad to others. And, and if the chips fall good for you, all right. If it don't, tough luck. That's how you live. And they believe that, that we just evolved and really there's no purpose. So if you, if you, if you, if you, get, if you get messed up or if you're broken hearted, just, just die because life has no meaning anyway. That's what's taught. They won't say that, but that's exactly what they teach and believe. And because of that, suicide is at an all-time high. Ladies and gentlemen, do you realize this morning that um, these same people blame all the wars in the world on religion. They said, religion started all the wars. And religion, all these millions of people have died. Have you ever heard them get on the news and say that? Or in a college uh, classroom and say, religion causes wars and causes people to die. Let me correct you a little bit there, buddy. Listen, uh, religion has been the cause of many wars. But Christians have never started a war. Christianity don't cause wars. Christianity is the answer to war. There is a difference between religion and real Bible Christianity. And so uh, that's a lie. You want me to tell you about, you want me to tell you what evolution causes? You know what Hitler did? Hitler had six million Jews exterminated because he believed they were an inferior race. He believed they're not as highly evolved as us Germans. And so they should all die. And they slaughtered them like you'd spray a bunch of ants or something and torture them. Do you realize that Joseph Stalin uh, believed and taught the same thing? Do you realize this morning that our school shooting, Dylan Claybow and Eric Harris, of the famous, well-known Columbine shootings in Columbine High School out there that shook the whole country, you know that them two boys... That, did, that, that made those shootings were strong and very strict in their belief of evolution. They targeted one football player and said, that boy don't deserve the jaw that evolution gave him. Look for it tomorrow. It won't be on his body. That's what they believe. They made a video and, and, and made said stuff like that. They said, uh, that Klebold's dad was a geologist, actually. And they followed strict Nazi teachings. Both of them young men did. And the shooting at Columbine was on Hitler's birthday. Conveniently left out by the news media when reporting it. Eric Kleber, his t-shirt said, natural selection. Natural selection is the motto of evolution. Natural selection means uh, uh, they just some get selected, some don't. And uh, these are evolved and these are less evolved. And that's how they teach the world uh, got here. And they killed, uh, so, so singled out Christian kids and shot them just because they're Christians. So don't, don't give us this baloney of uh, uh, religion causing wars when millions of people have been killed because the logical conclusion of evolution. Now, the reason we got a bunch of young people at college age living like animals is because they have been taught all their life all they are is an animal. And all you can do is satisfy this flesh and make yourself happy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in some scary, scary time. Now, Jesus said the way you would know that we're in the final days is that they would be just like it was 
in the days of Noah. The Bible said in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Now, that don't seem like such a big deal. People have always done that. And people, I've had people say, Brother Danny, why would the Lord say they were marrying and giving in marriage? Well, that ain't no sign of that. We've all had, well, if you look at it, it's who they were marrying and what they were marrying. And the Bible said they produced giants in the earth. Now, let's get a little education here just for a minute. Did you know the days were when there were giants all over this earth? I'm not talking about tall people. I'm talking about the tall people like Robert Wadlow and, and Manute Bowl or somebody like that. I'm not talking about people just seven foot seven and eight foot one and stuff like that. They have a they're inflicted with some kind of uh, of a of a sickness called uh, gigantism, and it makes their, their, their pituitary gland or something, and they just keep growing. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about Robert Wadlow and him. He was eight foot eleven, and he, he, he walked like this, you know, and and uh, died when he's like. 22, 22 years old. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about big people. I'm talking about people that were super high, super tall. The Bible said like a cedar and super strong and super smart that roamed this earth or at one time or another. Do you realize that's the only explanation for all the great uh, uh, gigantic buildings all over the world, like the pyramids, like down there in um, Punapuco, and like like in South America, and the heads on Easter Island, some of them weighing 40 and 50, some of them 90 tons, and they're stacked on top of each other in exact manner, in such a way that you can't get a razor blade in between them. Do you know that people had no backhoes back then? They had no trackhoes back then. They had no bulldozers back then. They didn't even have a, a drill or a saw like we have today. And you mean to tell me they stacked a 90 ton blocks up on top of each other 200 feet high and got them exactly right? You mean to tell them, they say, well, a thousand slaves of that. Look, people, if that right there was a solid block of granite, if we had a thousand slaves in here, you couldn't move. You, a thousand people can't touch that. <laughs> Try to get a thousand people to touch that at the same time. You, you might get 50, and they ain't going to lift it. All the monolithic structures of this earth. You say, well, Brother Danny, how come we wasn't taught in school? There you go. There you go. I'll tell you why you wasn't taught in school. There ain't because it's not true. There are giant bones all over America now, still here today. They have found uh, one of the videos sent me back there. Uh, and I, I'd seen something about that the other day. Gigantic skulls down in the Grand Canyon, people. And there's big, uh, pl uh, big uh, places in there that they won't even let nobody go look at. They're all over the country. You say, well, that, that sounds strange to me. And the reason it sounds strange to you because you are brainwashed by a public school. There were giants in the earth in those days. And Jesus said that's going to happen again. And they're going to come back and be like it was in the days of Noah. Supernatural beings that are not exactly all human. And brethren, we, why do you think all this stuff? Listen, you go back, you go back and you look, look it up. Look it up. And it ain't fake. It's not conspiracy. It shows articles from the New York Times, London papers, all over this country of skeletons 13, 15 feet tall from here back there. It's in the newspaper and showed pictures of them. But that goes against evolution. Evolution said we started out little and we're gradually getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So the Smithsonian Institute gets anything like that and hides it immediately from the public because it don't fit their narrative of evolution. I'm telling you this morning, you say, well, you're just a little old, old country hick. Don't know what you're talking about. No, you're wrong. I'm a country hick that does know what he's talking about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And I've done my homework. And I'm telling you, Jesus said, just like it was then, that's how it's going to be next time. He wasn't just talking about normal marrying and normal giving in marriage. There's something weird stuff going on, ladies and gentlemen. In Genesis 6, it said uh, that they, they were there. And that's how there's evidence.
There's evidence all over the world. There's footprints found in rock that long, that put that long. I mean, it's there. You can see it. There are dinosaur footprints with man's footprints right beside them in Glen Rose, Texas. And it just drives them scientists out of their ever-loving mind because they try to make you think dinosaurs was millions and millions and millions and millions of years before we ever got here. And that's not true. I'm telling you, brother, they, uh, they, they got it all wrong. And now, the Bible said this. Now, the Bible said in the last days, during tribulation, that men would be sent strong delusion. I won't take time to get into what I heard this week about world leaders saying that we are fast-headed digital currency. Fast. That makes people with money, you got money stashed somewhere. Um, I, hope, I hope the Lord gives us a few more years. But if you don't, you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do with it. Because, let's, let's face it, the government don't want nobody spending no money or making no money without them getting their chunk out of it. And I was telling you that the flea market over there, that's what the, the devil, the government hates places like that flea market. People pay cash. Here you are, I mean, a shotgun. Here that. And that's where it's supposed to be. Here, I, I want to buy that tool. I want to buy those pair of boots right there. What do you take for that saddle? Jew them down. That's, that's what our country was built on a free enterprise. And a, but the government has decided that they are going to take all of that away from us. And the way to do it is convert money to digital so that everything has to be done that they'll know about by computer and by numbers. And we are there, y'all. We are there. It's coming down the pike. Coming down the pike. You say, you're crazy. You Well, come back and tell me that in five years. You come back and tell me five years. Daddy, you didn't know what you were talking about. Listen. Listen, y'all. Let's just say. Let's just. Right, let's just say, I didn't say this is right. I didn't say the Bible is this. Let's just say for a minute. Suppose, suppose everything got worse and worse and worse. And I think there's going to be something else happen that shakes the world up. I might be wrong. Like the coronavirus, but not another virus. It always happens in a way you ain't looking for it. Like, like 9-11. We didn't see that coming. Like coronavirus, we didn't see that coming. This next one, we, pro we probably ain't going to see it coming. Bam! Oh, we never even thought of that. That's probably what it's going to be. The world is going to be in turmoil. There will be diseases. There will be all kinds of things take place. And then, let's just say, don't think I'm crazy. I preached this stuff back in 1997. And they put me in the newspaper in Marion. And the preacher's making fun of me. Let's just say that it got worse and worse and worse and then a big emergency happened. And let's just say that God says, okay, I'm going to take my children home and millions of people all over this world disappear. And it throws the world into a complete tailspin. And let's just say that the government says, hey, like it or not, now, we've got to take control of this situation. And now, the truth is, all the Christians in the world could go to heaven today, and most of the world wouldn't even know it. There's few compared to the world population. So it wouldn't even disrupt a lot of people. And then let's say that something lands over in Rome, like a big mothership, and or it comes to the... Comes to the Washington, D.C., let's just say, oh, Lord, he's lost his mind. He believes in little green men from outer space. No, no, I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. And the Bible said in that time the devil will be transformed into an angel of light, into something that you don't know it's the devil. And that's why they say, I saw a light in the sky. I saw a light in the sky. Do you think it's an accident that every time you turn the news on now, somebody's talking about UFOs? You think that's an accident? Oh, that's Russia. Yeah, Russia, your foot. Russia don't, they might be ahead of us, but Russia can't make something that can disappear and appear and appear and then shoot straight up in the sky at 10,000 miles an hour and leave a smell like sulfur. That's brimstone. Russia can't do that. China ain't doing that. Let's just say, I'm not saying this right. Let's just say 
some these group came down and they're about that tall about 10 feet tall and up and say we are here and they say who are you who are you we are the ones that planted your race here millions of years ago we've been observing you for years and years and years now here's where some people will check out Danny's lost his mind hang around a while hang around a few years and tell me let's just say let's just say that they say we've been experimenting and watching you for years and you finally progress to the point where you can now receive it because they say on the news that if they ever did one of them things land somewhere and an alien got out of it that it would destroy our structure of society and religion would be disappeared they think all of us they think if a UFO landed in Washington DC and an alien got out of it that we'd quit having church next week Ha 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 ha. Lord, what? Uh, they, they underestimated us, brother. We ain't going to quit having church. Lord, we'd start a revival the next night. All that proves is the book's true. The Bible said the earth's going to open up and there's going to be a pit and there's going to be things come out of that pit that are held hostage and change in hell. Better read your Bible. And, and But most people don't know that. The news media don't. They say, oh, it would destroy religion. No, it wouldn't. It might destroy religion, so it ought to be destroyed. But you know, it wouldn't destroy Christianity. And let's just say we are here now. We can heal you. You got coronavirus. You got sickness. You got cancer. Bam! The whole world gonna go crazy over that. And they're gonna follow. And let's just say that they say, "Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! All, all this time we were talk- we didn't know. We were ignorant. Well, what happened to Grandma? What happened to Freedom? Well, we had to remove them and take them to Alpha Centauri to be rehabilitated. Uh, those people were in the way, and they wouldn't go along with our global plans. That's what they already think about us. And uh, the truth is, we're gonna be getting rehabilitated, all right. Uh, we're gonna get the iron wrinkled out of our wedding garment and come back to rule and reign with our with our Savior for a thousand years. That's where we're gonna be." I'm giving some of y'all enough. Some of you look like you're about to choke. But I'm just saying, suppose, suppose, just suppose, many will fall. If this happened before the rapture, you'd have people quitting church by the thousands. They'd say, we thought, we thought, we didn't know we was put here from people from another planet. You wasn't. You was put here by God. And the devil will tell it just like it was in the days of Noah. And then the whole world government will come. And one man is going to run the whole thing. And ever all your buying and selling is going to be controlled digitally on computer. And no man can buy or sell unless you have that mark in not on, in your right hand or in your forehead. I'm telling you, how are we going to live right? How are we going to face these days? What are we going to do? I'll tell you a couple things and we'll go. A long introduction, very, very short points. First, we need a courage that does not fail. We need some courage. Brother, we need some people that will stand up like David did against the giant and said, you may be big, you may be tough, you may have killed a lot of people, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, what we ought to do in these final days is get a grip and get God down in our heart just right. Get our hearts right with God and say the world may hate us. They may outlaw church, but we come to them in the name of the Lord that saved us and blessed us and have, have some courage. Tell you something else you better have. You better have courage that don't fail. You better have some Christians who are your friends. It makes all the difference in the world. You young people listen to me this morning. It makes all the difference in the world who you hang around with. Who you hang around with is who you're going to be like. It rubs off you hang with the brother. I'm talking about you men too. Your buddies at work. You hang around them. You'll be picking up their words, their philosophy, their beliefs. It'll rub off on you. You ain't going to change them. They're going to change you. When you tell you throw a kid in a swimming pool, it don't change the pool. It changes the kid. A pool like a public school. You throw a kid in a public school and fuss at it for getting wet. The kid don't dry at the pool. The pool soaks the kid. You listen to me? People were in war. It ain't like it used to be. 
It's not like things were even 20 years ago. Uh, when we when Shining Light Baptist Church was still over there in that little building. Things are different now. This is war. We must stand and be brave. We must pick our friends who are Christians. I can tell you what you are or what you're going to be by the people you hang around with. One more time. I can tell you what you are or what you're going to be by the people you have. You better get you a good circle of friends and say, these are godly people. They're a good influence on my life. I can call them if I need somebody to pray. I can call them if I need advice. I can ask them to help me if I failed and fell into a temptation. I can have them. You better get you some Christians who are friends and stick together. Uh, don't, don't, don't desert them. Don't stay away from them. Don't, don't desert your church. Good night in the morning, y'all. This ain't no time to quit church. People quit church over the least little bitty thing. I mean, they get a little tiny scratch on their car. Somebody says something to their kid in the nursery or something like that. Lord, this ain't no time to be quitting church. This ain't no time to be backing up. This is the time to jump in head over heels and get on fire for God. Quit worrying about you. Quit crying. Quit white belly aching and crying and feeling sorry for yourself. Listen, I get my feelings hurt every Sunday. You know what that means? Nothing. I'm a grown man. Get over it. Get in there and serve God. Preach. Pray. Sing in the choir. Take out some tracks. We need to stand for God in these last days. Christians who are friends. He may be funny. He may be cute. But he'll wind you up out of church now the will of God and believe in all kind of crazy stuff too, ladies. Best thing you can do is quit watching TikTok so much and get your heart full of lust so you won't take the first yahoo that comes down the road that's going to ruin your life. Best thing you can do. Better off no one than the wrong one. All God's people say it. That's right. And I'll tell you another thing. I said, I'm going to say four things. One, you need courage that don't fail. Two, you need Christians that are friends. Three, you need closeness in your family. Don't leave your family. Stay close-knit. Stay with your family. Fam Listen, God ordained. God could have just let people pop out of the ground. But he chose to have a man and a woman and love and marriage and children. God's plan is the family. That's why Hillary and all the Democrats and all that are trying to say, well, you parents don't know. It we need to raise your kid. No, they're led by the devil. God gave you them kids for you to raise. You mamas and daddies, they're your kids. They belong to you. They don't belong to the state. You hear me? You hear me? They don't belong to the state. Your kids don't belong to the state. And brother, they're going to have a fight. They try to take ours. No! Don't let somebody take your kid. Don't say, well, uh, they said at the school that uh, there's actually school teachers in school trying to convince Little kids to question the gender that they were born. They're publicly pushing it. It's very obvious. It's out on. It's all over. I know. It's not a conspiracy. That ain't something I just think. I mean, it's very easy to prove that are encouraging kids to question the gender, and them kids are going to grow up mutilated, not even knowing what they're doing when they're 8, 9, 10 years old. When they get 30, they look back and say, Dear Lord, what in the world did I do to myself? Listen, brother, that's why you need to gather them kids around at night and say, This is the Word of God. God made us male. God made us female. I'm your mom and daddy. You're, you're my child. Let's love each other. Let's pray. You stick with your family. You get them kids around and pray. Don't let the devil rip your home apart. You need closeness in your family. Get closeness in your family. And I'll say last. I said first, you need courage that don't fail. Ain't no telling what we're going to say. Two, you need Christians that are friends. Three, you need closeness in your family. And by the way, don't expect us, don't expect me, I ain't enough. Don't expect me to correct all the mess your kids, you let them stay in all week long and bring them in here one hour a week and expect us to fix that. Kids got to hear the same thing at home as they do at church. Amen? Kids got to hear the same thing at home. They gotta, and they should be home to hear the same thing at school. And if you can't, you can't. But they at least let them hear it at home. You can't, mom and daddy can't fight and cuss, watch dirty movies all week. And then, well, I don't know what happened to my kid. I took him to church every Sunday. We can't fix what you let them do all week long. We don't have time or the ability. 
We're all going to have to work together. You're going to have to teach them kids the same thing at home as they're taught in Sunday school. That's why Sunday school is so important. The kids learn the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, you need closeness in your family. I said, courage that don't fail. Christians of your friends. Closeness in your family. Finally, confidence in our Father. You need confidence in our Father. I'm not preaching a negative sermon this morning. I'm preaching positivity. You know who preaches negativity? Evolution. They believe you're just going to rot. Hope you don't get sick. Enjoy your life best you can. That's their, that's their philosophy. Our, our philosophy is my father is rich in houses and land. He holdeth the wealth of the world in his hand. In rubies and diamonds and silver and gold. Uh, there is riches untold. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. With Jesus my Savior. I'm a child of the king. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to have, we got to have uh, more than, I, I, I just, I'm just, I'm just blown. I'm, a, I'm amazed. My mind can't grasp what all we're seeing. And, here, and you know, we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. You know that, right? They ain't no telling. I mean, that people sit around over in Asheville and beat drums to conjure up spirits on Friday. They're like a bunch of weirdos in the jungle beating on drums, bringing spirits in. That's how you do it. And they, listen, right over here in Asheville, Asheville used to be a good little place. We used to go over in the street, preach all the time. Old grandmas would come out there in them dresses down here and wave their hands and shout. There's little Baptist churches all over them mountains. And the devil saw that. And he saw Ralph Sexton Jr. and he saw what was going on and they moved in on that place. What we're going to do? I don't know about you. I don't know about you. The internet's not going to save us. You get that. They're going to eventually control that. What can be on, what cannot be on. I, my Sermon, one of them, sermon I preached not long ago, they sent a thing back, banned in several countries. And it's coming here, eventually. The freedom of speech that we have left is slowly being taken away. Here's the way that works. They said it worked in Germany and ever play, Russia. Here's the way that works. We believe in freedom of speech until we get in power. As soon as we get in power, we believe we have freedom of speech and you don't. You got to let us, and we're, our, our country's so dumb, we're letting people, well, freedom of speech, freedom of speech, how come it all one-sided? I don't believe nobody ought to hate nobody, but I do believe you ought to be able to say whatever you believe. If you believe a, a rock's God, if you believe in Allah, if you believe it, you ought to have the right to say it. But it's coming to the point where if you disagree with, with the controlling wicked elite, they'll shut you up. What are we going to do? I heard a story one time years ago about this man. He had his little boy out, and they were and they were out uh, fishing or something. Anyway, out by a big river, and they was going to camp out. And a big stream, a big uh, flood came that night, and it rained, and the water got up. And they was out there in a little old raft, and it capsized, and it was cold, freezing cold. And and he said the, the man uh, was holding on to branches and, and tree limbs and everything else so they wouldn't get washed away. And the little boy was screaming, Daddy, Daddy. And he had him like that, and the little boy crawled up on a rock. And the waves were so, and the water was so fast uh, that the Daddy got washed on down there, and he got out on the other side, and he said, Stay right there, son. Stay right there. That little boy's on that rock, and he's just a shivering and, and shaking like that right there. He said, stay on that rock, boy. Sir, I'm going to go get help. I'll go get help. I'll be back. I'll go get help. I'll be back. And his daddy left him all night long. That little boy sat there while that man traveled through that country, that wilderness, and went, and he said, the next day, sure the world. The next day, that little boy was sitting there almost froze to death, and he looked back, and he brought some help, and they got ropes and rescued, and he grabbed him, put a blanket around him, and began to hug him. He said, son, he said, I told you I'd come back and get you. I told you I'd come back and get you. That reminds me of us, y'all. We felt abandoned in this world, buddy. I'm telling you, buddy, it's the, the squeeze is getting put on us y'all I tell you where it's coming down like this right here it's getting worse and worse and worse just like I read out of that Bible that old Bible that I've been preaching since I was 19 years old is right on the money here today I'm telling you this old world's going downhill every day and we're out there shivering on that rock brother but our father said I'll come and get you he said I won't leave you I won't forsake you and he you know that little boy he said son were you scared he said yeah daddy I was scared he said 
son, was you cold? He said, yes, daddy, I was cold. And he said, son, did you ever doubt it? And he said, yes, daddy, I wonder if he was going to come and get me or not. I didn't know. And he said, son, did you shake? And he said, yes, daddy, I shook. But the rock didn't. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah, brother. I'm telling you, we may shiver. We may shake. We may, we may cry. We may fear. We may doubt. But the rock don't. And we're on the rock. The rock don't shake. We need confidence in our Father. I see you this morning in closing. Girls, come on back and sing another verse of that. I won't hear that song again. I'm glad y'all sung that. I want to say this morning, with that book in my hand, our Father will not forget us. Keep believing. Keep trusting in these final days. Let's stand. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. They're getting a song ready. Maybe you need to come and just get renewed up this morning. Maybe you need to come this morning and just say, Preacher, I need to make a new fresh start. Preacher, I need to get hit right back and hit it again. Let, let's get in this altar this morning and say, God, help us to be faithful in these final days. Come on. Come on, Christian. Let's just jump, get around this altar. Get business with God. That's right. That's right. People come from all over the building. All over the building. Don't you let the devil throw you a curve and knock you out. Don't you let him knock you out of church. Don't you let him knock you out of serving God. Hey, hey, listen, brother. If this ain't true, there ain't no such thing as true. If this ain't true, truth's relative. It is true. Let's come do business with God. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, do something real in our hearts. Touch us, Lord, this morning. Help us, Lord, to be faithful unto the end. Whatever that might be. God, we can't do it by ourselves. We're scared. We shake. We're lonely. We're afraid. We doubt. God, we're on the rock. The rock don't shake. And I pray, God, you'd have to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Say it, ladies. Say it, Kevin. Go ahead, God. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Somebody pray to these kids over here. May God speak to you. I've always been faithful, but he has. I've not always been faithful, but he has. Thank God he has. Amen. I've not always been graceful, but he has. And I've not always been true, but he's always come through. He's always come through. Saved. You need to get saved this morning. Maybe you've never been saved. Let's get it right with God. Come on. Come on. Get out of your seat. Come on. Come on.
on Calvary all along. He has given me a melody and song. He has, yes, he has. Hey, you know what? I'm glad we leave here this morning pumped up, positive. Amen. Confidence in our Father. Buddy, if your confidence is in Washington, you, you're in bad shape. If your confidence is in your doctor, you're in bad shape. You can leave here this morning saying, I'm having confidence in my father. My father that's brought me all these years will take me the rest of the way. That's a great thing, y'all. We ought to leave here this morning shout. Because our father knows what's going on. And look, you can't you can't ignore it. There's thousands of churches this morning. Where a preacher just gets up and tells everybody how great they are and how wonderful they are. And that's a bunch of junk. That's a lie. The truth is, things are not good out there. But things are good this way. And going to get better real soon. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Just I'm still praying this morning. If you don't forget now tonight, come praying. Bring somebody with you. I got a real special message I'm going to preach tonight. God's will. And you don't want to miss it. And then be here with you. Okay? Amen. This girl got saved. Amen. What about that? Give the Lord a big amen right there. Woo! Amen, ladies. Amen. Did you come on? Back? On Kelly's bus. Praise the Lord. Be sure and go back there and tell her. Uh, she was having it rough this morning. Amen. She had to drive the bus, pick up the kids, do all the bus route yesterday. But be sure and tell her that. Amen. amen. Lord of God. Hallelujah. Somebody else? All right. All right, thank you, Gary. All right, we're going to hook back up here. Six o'clock this evening, come pray and bring somebody with you. Lord will bless you for it. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. And uh, be careful getting out of here. I think the sun has come out. I just about did there a minute ago. I saw it. Uh, but enjoy your evening. Be back soon. Go ahead, bud, Jeff.